Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Student Dave. Yay! Okay, today we're going to talk about the almighty Kalman filter. Yeah, everyone loves the Kalman filter. Computer scientists, engineers, neuroscientists, elves. Everyone loves the Kalman filter. Why? Because it's incredibly useful. Um, no, okay. Well, we'll talk about exactly what the Kalman filter is, its implementation in a, in a kind of like a general sense. Then we'll talk about a specific example, going back to our Beijing Ninja hunting quail uh, and their issues with quail. And then we'll do a MATLAB implementation of that so you can kind of see the whole package like you did for the recursive Bayesian filter. Okay, so what is the Kalman filter? Well, before we talk about that, let's just recap what the, curse, what the recursive Bayesian filter is because this is kind of founded on that. You can, the, the Kalman filter is kind of an example or a specific case of the Bayesian filter. So again, the Bayesian filter, we can well, go back to the old videos if you want, but uh, I'll just give a little recap. It's a probability of hypothesis given the data equals a probability of hypothesis times the likelihood of the data given the hypothesis all over the probability of the data. Right? And so what we did is we took our hypothesis, our posterior, brought that back as a prior, and reiterated, iterated, iterative, rinse and repeat until our shirt is very clean, or until our state uh, estimation is as good as we need it. So more generally, what is this? This is saying the probability of a hypothesis at time t given the hypothesis at t minus 1 and the data at t. Right? That, that, that's really what we're doing, right? But this is kind of constraining our state estimate, or our states, or the things that can happen, because basically we're holding the state constant. The state isn't moving, and we're just kind of estimating it as we get more and more data from it. But what if, what if we want to model something more complex? So let's look at an example. Say we have our, a robot, a, a trash can robot. This robot goes around picking up trash. And here we've got a little body, there's his head. It's got like a little alien head, and it's got ears. And we're going to give this a name Wally. The Y. Don't you can't sue me, Disney. Wally. Okay. So there he is, and he's off in the desert, and his job is to pick up trash. He's a trash machine. Okay. And so he's going around picking up trash, and what he needs to know is he needs to know where he is. Other than how to pick up trash, he needs to know where he is. So he's got a GPS in him, right? And just like all GPS, like you have in your smartphone, it can be really dumb and full of error, right? So let's say. This is the probability of where we think we are. And here's the robot, and the robot thinks he's right here right now. Okay. Then the robot's going to move. He's going to turn on his motors and go somewhere else. Let's say he wants to go to this position over here. Well, he can figure that out just from the command he sends out, right? I mean, he commands his wheels to move, so he could tell, figure out, well, how, how far did I turn my wheels to go? You know, what was the acceleration, what was the velocity? And so he's going to have an estimate of where he's at. And the reason I say estimate is because there's noise in any machine. Your command can be junky, the sand can slip. There's lots of reasons why you may not be exactly where you sent yourself. And so what you're going to get is you get this broader distribution afterwards, and that's from the command, right? But then he can sample again from his GPS sensors, and then that'll tell him where the machine, where the GPS thinks he is, and maybe it's saying it's like, oh, actually, buddy, I think you're right here. And then you can combine those, notice what we said before, you can combine those to build a new estimate of where he actually is. And so what this is, this is what the common filter is going to do. It's going to give us the probability of a, of a hypothesis at time t, where we think we are in this case, or basically our state estimation. It's going to be given the uh, prior information of where he thought he was, um, including, then we're also going to include this new variable which is the command variable, or the action that was taken, right? That's affecting some of this estimate. And then, then again, we still have our data estimate, in this case, is the GPS. And this is what the common filter is going to be estimating. Um, this additional variable here allows us to have uh, a moving state, and it adds some other nuances to the algorithm that we'll go over shortly. But the whole idea is that, basically, you're including this action state with your data and your prior to build an estimate of where you think you are. Okay, let's get the paper out. New paper. Okay, so let's just draw this again real quick. We got a little little guy, a little Wally, the Y, and he's got a little body, he's got these little wheels, and he's in the desert cleaning stuff up. You know, humans left all this trash on Mars or whatever. Okay. So, um, we got this uh, probability, and what is he doing? So he's trying to figure out where he's at. He's got this GPS and he's got his wheels. 
So, uh, let's look at his last position, x of t minus 1. That's some distribution like this. And he's going to send out some motor command. We'll call that motor command u. This is convention. And then uh, we're going to have his predicted next state. That'll be right around there. It'll be like that. And then again, we're going to incorporate information. That is, we'll have some uh, measurement from the GPS. So this is going to be from the GPS. And then those together are going to get combined to build this final prediction. This would be like our x estimate. So this is what we're after. And so I'm going to go through a, uh, basically how Kalman does this kind of analysis in a computationally efficient way. Okay, so there's a couple steps to it. The first step is the state prediction. And that is, we're trying to figure out how to calculate x bar of t, this state prediction. Well, we know that it's a function of the prior state, right, x of t minus 1. And also, it's going to be a function of that motor command, u, u of t. The important thing in the common filter, the first assumption, is that it's a linear system of equations. That is, this um, predicted state is a linear function of the prior state and the command. Now, what kind of linear function it is depends upon the physics of interest that are going to be defined by A and B. That is, maybe it's a, you know, a rocket moving through the air and it's got some acceleration, or it's, um, or maybe it's a gyroscope, whatever it may be, the physics are defined, or the, the rules are defined in A and B. Also, we have error, just like we always do. We have state error estimation, and that's going to be Gaussian. So the first, so the two things are that it's linear in its estimates and that it has a Gaussian uh, distribution in its noise. Those two assumptions aren't always true for a lot of systems, but they're also true for a lot of other systems. And it's kind of a simpler model, it's a good starting point. That's what we're doing this here. The other part of this equation is the uh, sensor prediction. And I'll, you know, I'll explain why we care about that, but let's just talk about it first. Well, if Wally's going to move and he's going to have some prediction about where he's going to be, well then he should also have a prediction of what kind of information from the GPS he should get, right? So we'll call that Z, the, the GPS signal, Z bar, that's what our predicted is. And it's going to again be some function of what? Of our prediction. So some function C, whatever that we can define, whatever that rule is, that will transform that uh, prediction into some uh, sensor prediction. So the state prediction into a measurement prediction. And again, that will also have some error, error z. And that will also be Gaussian. So this would be our sensor prediction. And so the whole idea of common filter boils down to this. We have our x estimate, x estimate that we're after. And that's going to be a linear function of this. Our predicted state, x of t, plus the difference between the measurement, and the actual measurement, and the predicted measurement, multiplied by some gain factor called the Kalman gain. Kalman gain. We'll talk about that more later. So the whole idea is that you have your estimate, your, your prediction, and then you have predicted uh, sensor, and you go, well, if my prediction from my sensor is really good, and it turns out the measurement equals it exactly, well, this whole term goes away, and I'm just confident with my prediction. But if I'm wrong, if my estimate from, if, if my sensor estimate is different than what I actually got, I might have made an error. And so I'll correct it by however much the common game tells me to correct this uh, estimate here to get a final, more accurate estimate. And so this is considered a correction term. Correction term. But that, that's really the whole idea of common filters, is to basically incorporate our predictions of our state and our sensor information with the real sensor information we get to get a more accurate estimate of where we're at. Okay, and so in the next video with the uh, Bayesian ninjas, we'll go into a lot of the details of how this code teases out and what exactly is the common game.